Hi, this is Barry Malosso, I'm President and CEO of the American Institute of CPAs, and I'm here with this video with Eric Oscarson, who is the CEO of the AICPA subsidiary, CPA.com. And we're here today to give you a quick update on the CARES Act, and particularly for those of you who serve small business, and for those of you who are members who actually work in small business, because there's some very important provisions in that piece of legislation that is important to be aware of and to think about, and maybe even think about a little bit differently than we might be thinking about government support in the past. And that's the purpose of our dialogue is to really focus on those particular issues. And let me just begin this by saying there are a lot of unanswered questions in the tax extension area with the IRS. We have a team of people working on that. We have 125 different questions that we're working with the IRS to try to provide you some detailed answers. We're well aware of issues like uh, estimated tax deadlines and deadlines for other types of returns. Those are in process. As soon as we get them, we're gonna share them with you very directly. In addition to that, there are many provisions of the CARES Act, many, many provisions, including several provisions as it relates to the SBA. We have a team of people working on that issue as well, and we will share that with you once we get some clarity on exactly some of those programs. But today, what we're focused on is the payroll protection part, that section of the bill, because that is focused on small business and is critically important. And it ties into the public statements we made all last week about the importance of the government to have a program that ultimately can be a grant and can get to small businesses to support payroll. And in fact, that section of the bill actually achieves that. Eric, what are some of your initial impressions in this particular area? Well, thanks, Barry, and hello, everybody. It's, it's such a historic time for, for the firms out there. I mean, they're going to be playing such a huge role as trusted advisors for all of their business clients as they try to navigate this huge CARES bill, and in particular, the, uh, the Paychecks Protection Act. So we've been, we've been working at this aggressively over the past week, leveraging a lot of our uh, partners to gather this information. So let me just share some of the uh, key data points. You know, first off, when you when you think about the the Paycheck Protection Act, it, it's really a grant. It's going to be a grant if if the business you know applies you know correctly and, and 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 is able to get the loan forgiveness at the end. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But when you think about this program, it's a three hundred fifty billion dollar program. About six weeks of payroll for businesses under five hundred equals three hundred fifty billion dollars. So that's a little bit of the background on how they came up with that number. When you think about how this is going to work, there's a couple of elements. First, this is really going to be unlike any other loan that your small business clients have ever applied for. Uh, they're not going to have to put up guarantees. Uh, they're not going to have to have some test statements. They're going to be able to self-certify uh, in a good faith fashion this information. And that's that's the current, you know, that's the bill as it's written today. The other element is who are the lenders? And today it's approved or preferred uh, SBA 7A lenders. But as we've all been hearing, this is going to expand significantly. So Barry, you might want to comment a little bit on that based on some of your discussions uh, with Treasury and others. Yeah, I think for purposes of thinking about your relationship with your with your banker or your client and their banker, I think the uh, the Treasury Department is going to really work really hard to have, I'm going to say, almost all banks part of this process by next Friday. I, I mean, I'm sure it won't be 100 percent of the banks, but it's going to be a much larger uh, sort of tent of financial institutions that are going to be covered by this, because as Eric just said, it's not going to be a loan in the traditional sense. And Eric said, and I think it's very important, there is not going to be a certification by you as a firm or anyone else. The company in doing this right, and, and he's going to come back to this doing this right point because it's very important. But in doing this right, the company, the entrepreneur is going to be able to make a good faith self assessment or self statement that they were impacted by the current coronavirus situation. And that's gonna put them into the system and basically allow them 
to have the opportunity to get certain funding that ultimately will convert to be a grant at the end of the period of time if they take the steps correctly during that period of time. So Ben, why don't we just try to unpack it a little bit and just share some of the key data points. But before we do that, I just want to state that firms are really going to have to sit down with their client and look at all of the options available through the CARES Act. And you mentioned a number of them at the, at the start of this video, and then just determine what are the right ones. So you and I right now will go over some of the frequently asked questions related to the Paychecks Protection Act, but there's going to be lots of other options for the firms to discuss with their clients. So first, you're going to be eligible to get a loan for a larger amount than just this eight weeks of payroll and other uh, elements that will be forgiven. So that's one thing. Your small business clients could get a larger loan than just what's being forgiven. And that will be calculated at two and a half times an average monthly of average monthly payroll over a period of, 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 of time in the past. So that's just one data point for you. Secondly, uh, let me just kind of sh share, you know, one of the biggest questions is who's, who's eligible? Uh, you, have to, you have had to have been in business as of February 15th, 2020. Uh, you can be a not-for-profit. Uh, you can be an individual. You can be a sole proprietorship. You can be an in independent contractor. Um, and if you're, if you're a business, you have to have under 500 employees. And there's other, you know, classifications, but that's just kind of the, the broad bucket. So it's very important, again, other SBA loan capabilities that your client might want to take advantage of. And basically what's targeted in this is payroll, utilities, mortgage payments, and rent. That's the bucket of expenditures that are going to be eligible to convert at the end of the period of time to become a grant. And let me just say that when we started the process, we were, we were very vocal in saying we need to help small business and it needs to be focused on the payroll so that they can keep their employees connected so that when the startup occurs, it's going to shorten that time frame as quickly as we possibly can. And so we've got the, you know, the four components of staying in business and being ready to ramp up. And that is actually the message that we repeatedly said over the last week that was so critical on the focus to these 6 million small businesses. These businesses, they're basically, they're not, they're not functioning right now. So if that's what the government has asked, is asked for, you know, businesses to be shut down to, you know, help end uh, coronavirus. So the government's going to be basically making payroll uh, for up to eight weeks here. So there's been questions, Barry, on, what costs are eligible for payroll? So here's a quick list. It's compensation, payment for vacation, you know, medical or, or sick leave, uh, uh, payment for uh, the state and, and local taxes, um, payment for insurance pe premiums, even payments uh, for retirement benefits. So that's, that's the, the high level list of what's eligible under that payroll category. But as you said, uh, utility payments and rent uh, and mortgage uh, obligations are also included. So again, all subject to that limit of two and a half times payroll. But if the company isn't going to have maybe the same average payroll, that's the situation where Eric described, they would, might have the opportunity to, in this particular program, take up to that two and a half, but it won't all be forgiven. And so that requires some thinking in that process. Um, it, it, you know, as you sit down with your small business client or as you are a small business entrepreneur. I think one of the other components, Eric, in this Q&A area is we have heard from members who want to do the right thing, but we've had examples where, for instance, CPAs have said, well, you know, a business is only going to be eligible if essentially they're out of cash, no other assets to be able to, to, to take advantage of. That is not the intent of this program. The intent of this program is to keep the small business whole, ready to go when government officials sort of flip the switch and the enterprises can go back to working again. And I think just back to that two and a half payroll number, that's the maximum loan size that they can take. And this is going to be something that the firms are going to have to talk to their clients about. Do you want to just ask for a loan that will be forgiven? And then that's going to be eight weeks of payroll plus these other approved expense elements. 
So that's a very important discussion that need that needs to occur. And a couple of the other questions that that have been you know coming in what what happens after the forgiveness period? Well, what happens after the forgiveness period is if if for some reason you don't um, maintain the requirements, and one of those requirements is making keeping your employees on payroll, then you won't be forgiven that loan, and that loan then will convert um, to a, to a standard loan with a maximum of a four percent interest rate, and it the the terms are going to be you know it's a, it's a it's a max term of ten years. So that is something that you need to understand that your clients they want to make sure that they comply with the conditions so they get forgiveness at the end. The other thing that I would say, Eric, and, and we're not trying to give you every bit of detail here. We're trying to get you really in a mindset as to what the intent of the Congress's action in this this particular part of the two, two trillion dollar two trillion dollar plus package. This is this is not about finding all the reasons not to make the money available or not to have a series of hurdles, as Eric said earlier, of collateral and, and other types of normal lending decisions. This is a different approach, and it's very important to understand that. And as you interact with your clients, it's very important to go to it with that mindset. Now, let me just make this other point. There are going to be problems in this program. It's a huge program. And as CPAs, we take this notion of thinking about it ethically and, and fairness. There are going to be some things that fall through the cracks. There are going to be some things that we may say are not fair. But I would just encourage all of our members to think differently about that. We're going to give you some tools as soon as answers are out there to help, you know, think through these types of things. But I would really encourage you to think about what this really is. It's about a stimulus. And and this is not the pursuit of perfection in a program. This is about progress to make sure that small businesses, the engine of our economy, can be ready to go again when it's time from the with the physical you know medical threats that are out there this is a very very significant stimulus i mean a lot of your small business clients are going to be eligible for those individual grants as well so this is going to be able to with this grant this loan program they're going to be able to keep their employees paid or if they're an individual contractor uh, keep salary coming in as they're eligible for other elements of this this cares package and this is just going to be a very very important time i just want to kind of highlight again that at the end of this process this is why it's going to be helping the clients at the start and then through it the clients the small business clients or individual contractors are going to have to give documentation you know verifying the number of employees verifying their payments uh, related to their lease and utility obligations and then certifying this again and that will be the final step uh, to to get to get forgiveness, and that's a, that's a role that the firms will obviously be playing with these clients. You will have people ask you, "What about the fact that if I've already laid off employees, we know the the ballooning of the unemployment numbers that have happened in the last seven days?" And basically, the notion is when they apply for this and they're looking at this uh, prospective period of time to have employment, they can bring them back. In this process, the fact that they are already been laid off, the concept here is bring them back, put them on your payroll, pay them so that we are we, the government, are providing you a runway to get back to being open and running the business. Any last thoughts you have, Eric? Yeah, Barry, the only last thoughts I would have is I would just want to let all the firms know and members know that we're working with the other important elements of this ecosystem to help gather this information. Clearly, the payroll processes are going to play a huge role. We, we've got this coalition we've put in place, which is made up of many of the leading payroll processors. There's also going to be information from other sources, from general ledger packages. So we're reaching out to them to help understand how best we can put together processes and capabilities to get this information gathered for the small business clients with the firms right at the center and being the quarterback uh, throughout this process over, over the coming weeks. Thank you very much, Eric, for this. And I just want to remind all of our members, whether they're in industry or public practice, listen to this. When, when we went public with this notion about saying the most important thing that needs to be focused on that no one else was talking about 
was this notion of the small business employees. And what has ultimately been enacted and now all the way through the system is really a very substantive and different type of program for the small business community and its employees. Nothing like we've ever experienced with SBA loans or helping startup companies or any of those things. And so I would just encourage all firms, particularly as they're advising their clients. Yes, we need to get these things right as to make sure the grant converts, but we need to think in a different way. We need to not be biased by what we've experienced in the past with government support and government programs. We need to be thinking about how do we meet that objective, getting people back on payrolls and having those small businesses ready to start when it is safe to do so. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you very much for your leadership in this area as well. Stay tuned. We will keep everything updated for you on our Coronavirus uh, Resource Center, and we'll do other webcasts to give you these types of contextual discussions so that helps you really be very, very important in the economy as we move forward.